Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm excited to release the 2022 Fancy Quant Honorable Mentions list here. So a few disclaimers of how this is kind of structured to give you some context of how this actually works. Uh, before I release the list, and I'll put it on the screen here and we'll talk about it. Uh, but first off here, there was an invitation list, as many of you know from a previous video. I will link it somehow above uh, or below in the description. But there was a list of invitations sent out to schools. Many schools, probably more than half, didn't even respond. So I followed up with the school email addresses. I followed up with professors at the universities specifically that were supposed to be directors or those leading the programs. And more than half just did not respond. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Not going to speculate on why. Uh, other programs responded and did not want to be ranked. They actually refused it outright. Uh, many were polite, said they're not interested. They just don't want anything to do with it. And so we've narrowed the list down here now. The Fancy Quant Honorable Mentions really has two tiers to the system now. It is going to have the full reviewed programs. They ended up with a gold Fancy Quant stamp of approval. These are the programs I highly, highly recommend because they were willing to provide a lot of information on the programs that is not available to you uh, to go online and to find. So they gave me extra information above and beyond. Um, I'll go through methodology a little bit, but not too much in this video. But again, we looked at things that were different, more qualitative in nature, again, being reviewed by me, someone as an expert in quantitative finance who's someone who actually works in the industry, uh, reviewing many things such as textbooks and student reviews and opinions on these programs, as well as the traditional metrics like you know employment rates, but also where are these students being placed, what type of jobs are they? Um, but it's going to be two parts here. That is the first part. These are the gold standard schools. They will also get a badge next to them based on what I view as their specialty. Um, and then there's going to be a secondary list here. And the secondary list is going to be schools that are non-participant programs. So these are programs that I really enjoyed, I really liked. However, I reviewed them just as you would review them, right? I went online, I looked at their actual program listings, like the curriculum, all the information that you can find online on their websites, as well as me kind of digging around online on other forums and people discussing these programs, as well as some interaction with people over time that have talked about these programs, who have attended these programs and talked to me a little bit. Um, I'm basically reviewing these ones somewhat blindly. These programs did not provide a full in-depth analysis and review of their programs. However, given the information available online, given some of my personal information, these are the programs I think that are also worth mentioning. However, they do not receive a gold stamp of fancy quant approval because they did not provide me a very in-depth information about the programs. Now, I will mention as well, a few of these programs actually did not get the invitation. They were not on the invitation list. Uh, however, I went and did more and more research on many of the invitation schools. Many of them don't even meet very basic standards of what I would consider a quant finance program, even though they are top rated globally on many of these ranking sites, uh, they don't meet the cut. So they were not reviewed. Again, some other schools were added uh, just solely based on the fact that I know they're better programs or I had people recommending them and I did some other digging and they made the list here. So as a final disclaimer, right, these lists are by invitation only to be on the full reviewed program. They do have to participate in that. Uh, again, this list is not a full, comprehensive, every school possible under the sun. This is just trying to narrow down some of the best programs that I see out there. So without further ado, I will release the official 22 Fancy Quant Honorable Mention here. Uh, the two schools are going to be Carnegie Mellon, so it shouldn't be a surprise to many of you. They have been top rated on many of the ranking charts for many, many years here. So even back into like 2012, uh, when I was looking at programs, 2011, 2010. Um, and then also the University of Michigan. So again, these schools provided a lot of information that other schools just didn't provide or didn't want to participate in. Uh, so Carnegie Mellon's program, so I will do full video reviews of these programs and I will release more of the information, but perhaps not all of it but I will give you some reasoning and justification in a full video on why I like the programs uh, and why I think you should apply there and who should apply there. Uh, but Carnegie Mellon's program gets the balanced badge. So one of the drivers on Carnegie Mellon, and I've actually been watching them over the years as well, they're trying to cover the full spectrum of quant finance. So it's not really financial engineering focused in one very specific area. So again, it's derivative product creation. 
Uh, they're looking at trying to cover quant finance as a whole realm here. So they're covering computer science, math, stats, and finance all together simultaneously, and they do a fairly good job at balancing this. Now, I will note as well, they do not seem to focus on one type of student. So I like to see programs that pick out like computer science students and then train them to be quants, or they pick, you know, math students and train them to be quants. But in general, Carnegie Mellon seems to be looking at how do we find really, really smart students? Let's bring them in here. Uh, let's give them all the basic core tools here, which is extremely challenging, you know, in short durations of master's programs here. And then we'll actually send them out into the world well prepared for these sorts of jobs. So in general, it gets the balanced badge here. Uh, now the University of Michigan, I will talk about this one again in its own separate video. Again, as I've already reviewed them in the past, but the University of Michigan's program is very math heavy and math focused here. So their program is gonna be more focused towards, again, financial engineering applications. There is a lot more stochastic calculus being covered uh, by the University of Michigan than other programs that I have seen. Um, also, as I'll release here as well, students that are joining this you know, cohort here, they're joining the quant program here, um, a large portion of these are gonna come with math backgrounds and math degrees. And then Michigan actually has high standards that you need to have a solid math background to really get into the program. And then to make the program better, which I like to see as well, uh, they continue on at a master or PhD level. So some of that graduate level mathematics driven into the students to enhance and further your education here. So Michigan is very math focused, which is why they got that badge. Okay, so now the non-participant programs here, I'm gonna list off Baruch here. I think they have done an amazing job over the years. Um, some of the contributing factors to this, again, they didn't go through the same rigorous uh, analysis as the first two programs with an actual fancy quant honorable mentions, uh, but they have good industry practitioners in their programs. Uh, they have a good blend of classes. Again, they're somewhat computer science focused, which just seems to be part of their kind of drive at the school here. They don't get any badges because they're not actually ranked and I don't have inside information on them, but they've done a good job. They've handled well over the years and the course mix again is rigorous, which you will see all of the programs below have a fairly rigorous background here. Uh, again, Columbia, industry practitioners involved, good core curriculum, um, just a good school overall. Again, I'm not gonna go too much detail on these. Uh, Imperial College London is the only international program that made the list. So unfortunately, many international programs are just business schools and MBAs tagged on as a financial engineering program. And I did find some other ones I thought were quite rigorous and mathematical and really good programs. Um, and then I was trying to communicate with them, trying to work with them. There's not a lot of communication. There were a few things in other international programs that worried me. Um, so something from like the classes offered, like they're kind of rigorous. And then all of a sudden you had like a bunch of finance classes involved, or it seems like they're trying to attract a bunch of business students, for example. And so I'm trying to figure out, right, I mean, what level of math are you teaching? What level of stats are you teaching? I don't have a lot of information on that, uh, but Imperial College looked very robust. Uh, again, some of their graduates, if you look where they're placed, seem to be in actual quant programs here. Uh, the program just seems well-rounded, very rigorous. I'm not afraid to say I would recommend going there. Uh, North Carolina State, somewhat an underdog here in the programs. Uh, NC State is extremely well known for their statistics programs. Uh, they have some of the best in the country. They have some of the best professors in statistics in the country. If you look them up for masters in stats, they are commonly rated for this. Uh, again, NC State is trying to get into financial mathematics. They have done very well. They are not as well known, but it's a state school, so it's typically a little bit cheaper than going to like a private school. Um, I think NC State would be a good consideration, and I have talked to quite a few of their students. Uh, NYU Tandon School of Engineering. Again, this has probably the highest, maybe the highest, somewhat the highest amount of industry practitioners teaching in the program. Um, so curriculum wise, again, I don't have the inside nitty gritty details. Uh, they weren't on the original invite list, but I'm sure they would have participated but they have a lot of industry practitioners providing an industry insight here. So this makes it easier to find jobs. Uh, this gives you more of a hands-on practical approach. There are some solid coursework as well though in the traditional academic rigor, which I do like to see. Um, there's a little bit more of the finance side of it than other programs as well. So they'd probably be more of a balanced program than a specific program. But again, they have a well-rounded program. It's solid, it's in New York City. Finding a job from NYU would be fairly easy. So they have made the list as well. And then finally, Rutgers. So Rutgers has multiple programs here, be cautious. Uh, the Master of Science in Mathematics, Financial Mathematics Specialization here. 
Again, it is very rigorous. It seems to be quite driven on the math side, the application side. So I think it's a good academic program as well. And then of course, location is gonna be crucial here. So location is close to New York City. Uh, you can get to New York City, you can find jobs, you can interview. Being local makes it really easy to find jobs. So anyways, this is the Fancy Quant Honorable Mentions 2020 list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.